All right, guys, so remember that uh, in this lab, lab number eight here, we are interested in showing you how to use the function generator, which is this instrument over here, and how to use the oscilloscope, which is this instrument over here. So the idea is that we are going to use the function generator to generate signals and there is a three type of signals that we are interested in. The first one is what we call the sine wave. It's a sinusoidal signal. The second one going to be the square wave. And the third one is the triangular pulse. So this will generate the signals. You can adjust the magnitude of that signal, the voltage of that signal, or the frequency. The frequency means like how often how many cycles do we get in one second relates to the time period the frequency is one over the time period so you can generate a signal here while the oscilloscope is used to measure signals so we're gonna go over the experiment we're gonna go over the steps I'm gonna carry the experiment and I will tell you what the measurements are you gonna record those measurements and then answer any questions as provided in your handout. So if we look into the handout, for example, the first question, it says that locate channel 1 in the function generator. So our function generator has two channels, channel 1 and channel 2. We're going to locate channel 1, and then we're going to use a T-splitter. So this is a T-splitter, as you see here. That's a T-splitter. So we're going to have a T-splitter to connect it to channel 1. So the idea of the T-splitter is that it will generate two sides of the same signal. So the same signal is going to split into two branches. One branch will go to the oscilloscope, you can measure it. The other branch can be used to be connected to the circuit. So basically you will be able to measure the signal directly and then you will be able to use the signal that for testing purposes to go to your circuit. So in the first experiment, we are interested in sending the signal from channel 1 to the oscilloscope. And we're going to measure the signal and look at some of its characteristics. So to do that, we use a BNC to BNC coaxial cable. This coaxial cable will handle high frequencies, usually up to 50 megahertz. Sometimes they can be 100 megahertz signals, uh, which are kind of high frequency signals for our instruments over here so it's RF signal and then we use BNC this is called PNC connector so it's BNC to BNC connectors those are female connectors so we're gonna connect one side of the T-splitter to the PNC connector of the function generator and the other side will go to the oscilloscope. So we're going to connect the other side to the oscilloscope as shown here. So this is the first step. The second step, it says that turn on the function generator and the oscilloscope. So I'm going to turn on the function generator and the oscilloscope. That's step number two here. And then it says that once they get turned on and all that, I want it to program channel 1 to give me uh, 1000 hertz, 1 kilohertz with a magnitude of 10 volts peak to peak uh, and that's going to be a square wave. So to select the square wave with the function generator I have here the sine wave button, it's already led. Over here is the square wave that's the triangular pulse or the ramp. So now I'm going to do a square wave, I'm going to click on the square wave and then we need to choose a thousand hertz so I'm gonna come to the first button here it says frequency I'm gonna click on it make sure it says the frequency I'm gonna write one I can do kilohertz one kilohertz is the second button here that's will give me one kilohertz so I'm gonna click on 1k that's 1000 hertz 1k is 1000 hertz and then I'm gonna make sure that the Ambitude, which is the second option here, that's the Ambitude, going to read 10 volts 
big to big. So I click on 10 and I have options of what's the voltage is gonna be. So I'm gonna click on 10 volts peak to peak. Now I have 10 volts peak to peak at 1000 Hertz, but it's not sent anywhere yet uh, to the signal. To send it, I need to turn it on using the output here. I wanna make sure that the offset is zero. So let's make sure that the offset voltage is zero. It is zero in this case. So I'm gonna send the signal to the scope now the function generator is sending a square wave signal to the scope. The scope is not reading anything yet because it is it is uh, stopped. So I have to do run. It's turned on. I'm going to do run. And then I'm going to do auto set. So here you go. We have a square wave signal for, uh, for the function generator. Step number three, it says that locate the auto set, turn on the scope and do the auto set. I just did that. That was step number three. Then we're going to adjust the volt per division knob. First of all, let me zoom in into the scope now. I'm going to zoom in into the scope a little bit. Like that. And now we're going to see in the scope for channel one, there is a knob voltage here. This is the knob voltage for channel 1. This is the knob voltage that controls the voltage for channel 2. This is the knob voltage for channel 3. This is the knob voltage for channel 4. This is the time per division. The time per division or the second per division knob. So this one for the voltage. Adjusting the voltage up and down for the scope. Basically here I'm controlling the scope. I'm scaling the scope, the measured value. So over here, I can make the scope bigger. So when you make the scope bigger, the amplitude goes smaller. And I can adjust it up. Now this, the voltage per division is smaller. That means the amplitude will be shown bigger. It's basically volts per divisions. So if you look into the screen of the scope, we have divisions, we call them major divisions. So we will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight divisions on the vertical axis and 10 divisions on the horizontal axis. So the horizontal axis is the time axis and the vertical axis is the voltage axis. So then it says that for the volts per division, we're gonna adjust it to be two volts per division so over here it says the channel and that's going to be two volts per division over here it says that it's 500 microsecond which is 0 0.5 millisecond so the division right now is the way it is done in uh, in step three you can adjust the time per division for example over here so this is a different time per division All right so we can adjust that so now we go back to uh, 500 microsecond, which is 0 0.5 millisecond per division. So in this step now, you need to plot this particular signal that you see. So let me zoom in to see that you need to plot it into your handout. So this is basically step number three, plot the signal into your handout. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come to the function generator, uh, which is step number four. And in step number four, we're going to come to the function generator and we are going to slowly increase the frequency from 1000 hertz to 10 kilohertz. And then we're going to come down from 10 kilohertz to uh, 100 hertz. And we want to see what happened to the scope. So basically the idea here is by changing the frequency, by making the frequency going higher and the frequency coming lower, we wanted to see what happens to the scope. You need to comment in what happened to the scope. So basically what happened to the signal because the scope measures the signal and the function generator going to send the signal. So we are changing the properties of the signal. We want to see what happens to the scope. It's very important properties 
when you change the frequency, something happens to the signal. We need to know what happens to the major signal. So now I'm going to click on frequency. I'm going to use the knob to go uh, from 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. So now I have 2 kilohertz. See what happens when you go 2 kilohertz. 3 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz, 5 kilohertz, 6 kilohertz, 7 kilohertz, 8 kilohertz, 9 kilohertz, here is 10 kilohertz. So what do you think happens when the frequency increased? Well, we end up having more cycles on the scope. The scope measures the signal, more cycles on the scope. We call that we are compressing the signal. So by increasing the frequency, it's like you're compressing the signal on the scope. You are compressing the signal, right? That's what happens when we increase the frequency. Now I'm going to reduce it all the way to, to 100 hertz. So we're going to keep reducing it to 100 hertz. Now we are at 4 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz. So I'm going to keep going now into... 700, 500, 400, 300, and then 100. So what do you think happens when we went from 10 kilohertz to 100 hertz? The scope show expanded signal. We are changing the frequency of the signal. So when we reduce the frequency, the signal is expanded. So let's go back and increase it here. We are compressing it. Right, right now it's at... one kilohertz so we go back to the one kilohertz original signal so now we know what happens when we increase the frequency of the function generator on the scope it will look like we are compressing the signal if we reduce the frequency of, of the function generator on the scope it will look like it's expanding the signal it's very important properties and they are so intuitive that you need to know those things now what we're going to do is we go back, that's step number five basically, we're going to go to the one kilohertz and now we're going to use the knob of the function generator to slowly change the voltage from two volts peak to peak to 20 volts peak to peak. So let's see what happens when we do that. So I click on the button of the voltage, which is the second button here. So it says amplitude. I'm going to play with an up to increase and reduce the voltage from 2 volts to 20 volts peak to peak. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to see what happens to the scope. So let me go back to the scope here. That's my scope signal. And now I'm going to start increasing the voltage to... Uh, uh, 20 volts so let's see what will happen when I do that now it's 11 volts 12 volts 13 volts now what happened when it goes higher than the scope range now I don't see the top and the bottom of the signal the whole signal is gone right so you can see that now all the way to 20, I don't see anything. I can't really measure it because I'm outside the range of the scope. Now I'm going to start decreasing the amplitude. Now, you know, at this point it's at 13 volts, then 11 volts, 10 volts, 8 volts, 7 volts, 5 volts, all the way to 2 volts. And you can see that when it goes to 2 volts, it's going to have a one major division up and one major division down. Right? So it's going to go up and down by one major division. So, so basically what happened now is that when we increase the amplitude of the function generator, the amplitude on the scope, the vertical values of the scope, will expand, will get taller bigger and when we reduce the amplitude of the function generator the amplitude of the signal on the scope will shrink will start to get smaller shorter values right? so the vertical axis is related to or measures the amplitude of the signal so that's important to see also i want you to pay attention to 
the fact that you can shift the signal up and down, that's the volts, based on the reference value. So the reference value is used in this arrow. Let me zoom in to show, to make you see those reference values because they are important. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So this arrow over here, you see, is the reference, is the zero volts, and this arrow over here is the reference, which is the zero time. You can shift the signal up and down, or right and left, and you're always going to refer to those arrows as references. So I have it kind of in the middle, I'm using my eyeball here, and I'm onto the side of it, so that's the middle of that signal. That's what I have here. So basically, in step number five, we said that if you increase the voltage, the signal will get taller. If you reduce the voltage, the signal will get smaller. And then there is a possibility of leaving the range of the scope. If you leave the range of the scope, you can't really know what the measured voltage is. So that's something also you need to pay attention to. So in step number six, it says that let's go back to the 10 volts peak to peak. So I'm going to make the voltage to be 10 volts. So I'm going to come to the function generator. I will write 10 volts peak to peak. So I have 10 volts peak to peak at 1 kilohertz. Sure enough, on the score, it shows that it's 10 volts at uh, 1,000 hertz. Then what it says is adjust the knob of the scope, the seconds per division. So we're looking at the time per division. So at this point, we have 500 micro per division. So the scope here is divided into 10 horizontal divisions. The 10 horizontal divisions here are corresponding to uh, five, my, 500 microsecond per division, 0 0.5 millisecond. So we're going to adjust that, and now the signal is fixed, but we're going to adjust the scale of the scope. Adjusting the scale of the scope will show you different type of signals. It will show you different things. So we're going to come here, and we're going to make the timber division go higher to uh, 500 seconds. So we're going to do that slowly. Right? So we're going to make it 5 seconds. Here you go. This is your 5 second here. So what happened now, the signal is fixed from the function generator. But in the scale, we made the time per division here to be each division, each major division. We have total of 10 divisions from the beginning to the end. Each division here will worth 5 seconds. That means in each division, we're going to have more cycles. So what happens when we make the time per division or the second per division bigger value? We get more cycles on the screen. If you reduce the time, we get less cycles per division. As you can see, we are zooming in. We get less cycles per division. So here we have roughly about three cycles per division when we use 250 microsecond. So at 250 microsecond, we get less uh, uh, cycles. Basically, we are zooming in into the signal. We see what the signal is, right? We are zooming in inside the signal. We're looking at the details of the signal. If you even go smaller, if we go smaller and smaller, we start to see the details of that signal. You see the details of the signal now are shown to us because we are zooming into the signal. So, and that's basically what the time per division will do is zoom in and zoom out in term of the signal, even though the signal from the function generator is fixed. So, when we increase the time per division on the scope, more cycles are shown on the scope. When we reduce the time per division, we zoom in into the signal to see what's going on. Let's take this back again to 500 micro. It's this way.
that's our 500 microsecond uh, the last step here is basically to adjust the volts per division for the channel so channel 1 will have this knob will adjust the volts per division so by making it smaller by making the volts per division smaller the signal will get taller right and now we are out of range right so we are out of range but by decreasing by increasing the volts per division we are gonna have a signal is shorter because basically here it says for example at this point that we have 5 volts per division right? so each division here is 5 because the signal will go 10 volts peak to peak so the peak to peak value here from one peak to the other peak will take two divisions and it has about two divisions from one peak to the other peak if you make the volts per division smaller the signal get taller because now we have less volts per divisions it's going to take more divisions to show the same signal so and that was step number seven basically now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the same thing for the sine wave so we're going to go back and we're going to and that's step number eight basically so in step number eight we will investigate the sine wave so i will come into the function generator let me zoom out and show you the function generator. So now using the function generator, what I will do is I'm going to come into the button where it says a sign. I'll click in a sine wave. So it's a sine wave. And sure enough, we have a sine wave on the scope. So what I have now on the scope is a sine wave. So, and that's number eight. It says now we need to investigate the sine wave using the fun function generator. Apply one kilohertz at 10 volts peak to peak. So it's already at uh, one kilohertz, but I'm going to write one kilohertz. That will give me one kilohertz. Then I will come to the amplitude. I will do 10 volts peak to peak. Now I have 10 volts peak to peak. And then I need to adjust the knob scale of channel 1 on the scope to give me 2 volts per division. And the time scale to be 250 microsecond or 0 0.25 millisecond. So we have here 2 volts peak to peak. That's what I have. But the time scale going to be 250, 250 microsecond which is 0 0.2 millisecond. Now you need to graph this function as you see it. So let me zoom in into the scope so you can plot this function carefully. So here you go, you can plot that. This is step number eight. So in step number nine, it says that let's adjust the frequency and see what happens. So we're going to come to the function generator. I will select the frequency. I will use the knob. I'm going to increase the frequency from 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz and see what happens when we do that. So this is 2. That's 3. 4 kilohertz. 5, 6, 7 now 8 kilohertz 9 kilohertz that's 10 kilohertz so by increasing the frequency what happens the scope is fixed the function generator is increasing the frequency we start to have more cycles per second we compress in the signal more cycles per second on the scope so if we reduce it again I'm going to reduce it to 1k but you get the idea here it's very similar to the concept of the square wave if you reduce it to 1 kilohertz, that's what we have. So we can even reduce it to 100 hertz. Let me write 100 hertz. And you're going to see portion of that signal. 
So at 100 hertz, we're going to see portion of the sine wave. It's portion of the sine wave. So let me go ahead and increase it. See, you start to have you know, more sine wave going in. As we start to increase it, I'm going to bring it back to 1K. That's a 1K signal, a sine wave signal. The other one will be to use the knob to adjust the voltage from 0 0.5 volts to 20 volts. So at this point here, it's 10 volts peak to peak. So I'm going to click on the voltage button. I'm going to start with 0.5 volts. So I'm going to enter 0.5 volts peak to peak. So you can see that the signal is very small. And here the oscilloscope is not stable when it reads it. It's a very small signal compared to compared to the scale of the scope. I can zoom in in the scope, but that's a different story. If you keep the scope as fixed, you can see you have sort of a sine wave signal. And now I'm going to start to increase it slowly. Let's see what we have. So over here we have about 1 volts. That's at 1 volts. 1.1, 1.2, we are increasing it. That's 2.6, 2.7, 3. I'm slowly increasing it using the knob. Now it's at 5 volts peak to peak, 6 volts peak to peak, 7, 8 volts peak to peak, 9 volts, 9.6, 9.7, 9.8, 9.9, .9, 10 volts peak to peak. So now I change the amplitude again to 10 volts peak to peak. That's what I got. That's the original. I'm going to start to increase it to 20 volts so this is 11 volts 12 volts 13 volts 14 15 16 volts peak to peak if I go higher than that it's gonna start clipping I don't see it right I start to lose information because the signal on the scope is outside this range I don't show the signal on the on the screen anymore and I want you to see that I want you to see that when we increase the amplitude of the signal the amplitude on the function generator will increase until eventually it leaves the range of the scope. It's not part of the range of the scope anymore. So at this point it's 20 volts, so I'm going to bring it down to 10 again. 11, 10. That's the 10 volts peak to be. So that was step number 10 by changing the voltage, what happens. Now we uh, go back to 1 kilohertz, which is what we have here on the function generator, and 10 volts peak to peak. But we're going to come to the scope, and we're going to play with the scope. We're going to start to increase the time per division uh, all the way to 5 uh, milliseconds. So by having more time per division, we expect to have more cycles. So let's see what we have when we zoom in. We are actually, I'm sorry, when we zoom out. Uh, that's what we have is this here is at 1 millisecond per division this is 2.5 millisecond per division and that's 5 millisecond per division so we start to have more cycles there is more cycles uh, uh, shown on the screen because the time scale is so big there are so many cycles in one division right? that's what happens is actually we are zooming out when we make the time scale bigger when you make the time scale smaller, we zoom in. We start to see more information within the cycle. Eventually, you even go within the cycle itself, right? This is portion of the cycle, right? So let's go back to 250 microsecond, which is the original setting. So that was step number 11. When you increase the time scale, you get more cycles uh, shown on the scope. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust the voltage per division. So here is the volts per division. If you're going to increase it, if you increase, if you increase the voltage per division, that means the signal will get smaller because each division represents a high voltage. So we're actually compressing the amplitude by making the voltage per division bigger. So bigger, bigger voltage per division, you compress the amplitude. Smaller voltage per division, you expand the amplitude. Eventually, it clips outside the screen. It clips it. When it clips outside the screen, you can't see the signal. You defeat the purpose of why you want to use the oscilloscope.
So that was basically step number 12. Step number 13 going to be similar thing, but what we're going to do is we're going to apply a triangular pulse. So I'm going to zoom out again and show you how to do the triangular pulse on the function generator. So here is the function generator. And in the function generator, I'm going to come in to the third button here where it says RAM. When I click on the ramp, that's what it shows here, which is the triangular pulse. So I start to see a triangular pulse. Now we're going to do the same story here. Let me zoom in here to the scope because you need to graph this first function. So in this step it says that click on the auto set, so let me click on the auto set. That's the auto set, so it's going to go and do the auto set. And then we're going to adjust the voltage per division to 250 micro. Uh, the second, the time per division, going to be 250 micro. Uh, and then the amplitude going to be... two volts per division which is what we have two volts per division so this is the signal that you have for step number 13 so you need to graph this signal sketch it basically on your on your handout and step number 14 says that we're gonna slowly increase the frequency to 10 kilohertz and then reduce it to 100 hertz we're gonna get the same story you're gonna get compression more cycles per second as we increase the frequency because the scope is fixed and the function generator is going to increase the frequency so we're going to get more cycles on the scope so i'm going to do that we're going to start increasing the frequency now it's at three kilohertz four five six kilohertz seven kilohertz eight kilohertz nine and that's ten kilohertz you start to see that more cycles per second start to show or more cycles so we start to see that we have more cycles are showing on the screen now when we reduce the frequency i'm going the other way around okay here you go so when we reduce the frequency you start to see that we start to zoom in right this is zooming out more cycles this is zooming in less cycles so this is at one kilohertz if we go less than 1 kilohertz, uh, we start to get less cycles. Eventually, you start to zoom in within the cycle. You start to see stuff within the cycle. This is at 1 hertz, right? So at 1, uh, 100, this is at 100 hertz. At 100 hertz, you start to see portion of the cycle. So I'm going to increase it again to 1 kilohertz. So in this step, what happens when we increase the frequency? We get more cycles showing on the scope. What happens when we reduce the frequency? We get less cycles showing in the scope. So step number 15, it says that uh, let's set the frequency at 1 kilohertz. And now we're going to vary the voltage of the function generator from 2 volts to 20 uh, volt. So I'm going to start by selecting the voltage. I will enter 2 volts. So we're going to start with 2 volts, peak to peak. So that's what we have uh, at low voltage. You can see that uh, the voltage is very small. That means the amplitude, the vertical axis, the peak of the vertical axis is very small. Now by increasing the peak, they start to increase. The peak start to increase. right? So at this point, we have 15 volts peak to peak. That's 16 volts peak to peak. Above that, it's going to start clipping. We don't see portion of the signal. 17, 18, 19. That's 20 volts. So when we go to 20 volts, basically the signal is clipping on the top and the bottom. We don't see it. So what happens when we increase the amplitude uh, of the function generator? The signal on the scope will be taller. If we reduce the amplitude of the function generator, the signal in the scope will be lower. And that basically was step number 15. Let me go back to 
10 volts peak to peak. That's what I have here is 10 volts peak to peak. So now we're going to move to step number 16. And in step number 16, we wanted to play with the scope. So here we're going to adjust the second bird divisions. So the time bird division. So by making the time bird division bigger, I will see more cycles because there is more seconds in one division. You get more cycles. So by making the timber division bigger, you compress the signal. That's what happens. And by making the timber division smaller, you expand the signal. You can eventually zoom in even to see portion of the signal. This is here is at uh, 50 micro second. So we're going to do it at... Uh, 0.5 milli, 500 micro, that's at 500 micro second. So that's what we have here. So to see more cycles, you make the timbre division bigger. It's basically compressing the signal. If you make the timbre division bigger, you compress the signal on the scope. The signal itself is constant, so the function generator is just sending you 1000 hertz. But here, you can zoom in or out of the major signal by adjusting the seconds per division or the time per division up. Step number 17 says that adjust the knob of the voltage per division. So here we're going to adjust the knob of voltage per division. Same story. If you make the voltage per division here small, the signal is going to get taller. Eventually, it will clip out. Right? So that's what we have here. If you make it smaller, if you make the voltage per division bigger, it's going to keep shrinking down, right? Shrinks down, and that's basically what we have here. So that was step number 17, and that was the end of experiment 1 in lab number 8, which is basically hands-on, hands-on. You're going to play with the function generator and all that, hands-on, and the oscilloscope to get comfortable with the measurements. So uh, this is the end of experiment one. When we're going to come back, we're going to do experiment two.